At the end of the previous part of this lecture, I asked this question about a steam engine. And so let's just have a look at it. This is connecting back to earlier ideas of efficiency. Remember that efficiency is just what you get divided by what you pay. In this situation, what we're getting is work. And the work done is going to be the difference between the heat in and the heat out. And so the efficiency is just going to be the work divided by the heat in, or in other words, the difference between the heat in and out divided by the heat in. And if you do that, that's going to give you 1.5 kilowatts divided by 10, which is 0.15. An important point to note is that nothing in our definition of heat engines said that heat engines were technological, things that people build. They don't have to be. Nature is full of heat engines. For example, storm systems are heat engines. Take a hurricane, for example. The hot reservoir is the warm ocean surface, and the cold reservoir is the cold upper atmosphere and it does work producing fast winds and raising moisture to high altitude before it rains. Another example would be mantle convection. The core, which is kept hot by many things, partly radioactive decay, but mostly by the phase transition from liquid to solid of the outer core to the inner core, and the cold reservoir is the crust, and this causes convection in the mantle, which is also responsible for plate tectonics. A related idea to, to a heat engine is a heat pump. Essentially, a heat pump is just a heat engine being run in reverse. So let's take our simple heat engine that we looked at before and see how to run it in reverse as a heat pump. We need a region that is cold at some temperature Tc, and a region that's hot at some temperature Th, and we need some insulation. And we need to start with our blocks higher up, because we're going to use them to do work on the heat pump. So first we put the insulation onto the cold side of the pump, and we put a block on. The block does work on the piston and heats up the air inside it. And now that hot air is going to give up heat to the hot reservoir. We now wait until it cools down, then remove the insulation and put the insulation on the hot side, and remove the mass, which makes the air expand and cool, and so it'll accept heat from the cold part. And we just repeat that. So we draw the same sort of diagram for a heat pump that we do for a heat engine, where we show it as a system operating between a cold reservoir and a hot reservoir. But in this case, it is taking in work and using that to transport heat from the cold reservoir to the hot reservoir. We've seen the efficiency of a heat engine. There's a similar idea for a heat pump, although it's defined rather differently, and it's called the coefficient of performance. One thing to recognize about a heat pump is that it can be used for either heating or cooling. And we define the coefficient of performance differently depending on which one you're using it for. So if you're heating with it, then you would think of the heat out as what you get, and the work that you do as what you pay, and you would define the coefficient of performance as Q out over the work. On the other hand, if you're using it for cooling, then you would probably think of what you get as the heat that you have taken out of the place that you're trying to cool. And so you get a different definition for your coefficient of performance. So let's check your understanding of this. What do we know about the coefficient of performance? Is it less than one? Could it be either less than or greater than one? Or is it always greater than one? Let's think about the coefficient of performance for heating. And I'll warn you, you can't just assume it's like an efficiency. It's defined in a similar way to an efficiency, but it's really not the same. So look at the definition and think about it carefully.